Pippa's kids. Look, are you sure you didn't leave a handbrake off? It's easy enough to do. I may be old, young lady, but I'm not stupid. It's kids. Which kids? How would I know? Kids from the school. They run riot these days, different when I was young. Oh, maybe I ought to just get out the rifle. You can't do that, Mrs. Harris. You do something about it then, and I won't have to, will I? Oh. At least there's somebody who gives a damn. So what's happening? They do you again for drunk and disorderly. <laughs> Uh, this is Billy, my stock hand. Got your winch? In the truck. Billy, have you seen any uh, kids hanging around the property? No, I'm only here one day a week. But it's kids all right, that's for sure. They're out of control. I'm telling you, Wayne, it's my auntie Frieda all over again. No, we've known her for half an hour. You're ready to put her in the funny farm. My auntie Frieda is not in a funny farm. Oh, could we please <laughs> shut the family album and just get on with this? Three weeks ago, she phoned up and said her ute was nicked. I found it in the paddock behind the house. Key's still in the ignition. Boss, she left it then. Two months back, cows on the road, prang, gate left open. Looked like her to me. I mean, she's what, boss? She's 70. All right, 70. Well, that's getting on. It still could be kids, giving her a hard time because she's old and helpless. That old dear's about as helpless as a Rottweiler. Oh, so we're just going to dump her. No, we are not just going to dump her. You are going to go out there and keep an eye on the place, see if there's anything in this. Maggie, you go over to the school, have a bit of a natter with the teachers. Nothing official, just kids bragging, someone dobbing, you know, the sort of thing. Got it, boss. Yeah, hang on a minute, I haven't finished yet. Police week. Oh, yes, I knew that would bring a smile to your faces. Police week. Well, I'm sure I don't need to remind you, it begins in four days' time. There'll be public tours of the station, commencing with the women's lawn bowls team. That'll be yours in PJ. Oh, thanks so lot, <laughs> Pam. Maggie, you can take that one. Oh, thanks very much, boss. After that, there will be tours every day for the rest of the week. Both the schools, the CWA, etc., etc. These rosters will tell you which tours you're taking and at what time. Read them and we. Uh, boss, now, I'm pretty I've, busy. I've got to do some lot traffic. Of Spare me the excuses. You all know the score. Check the times of your tours and make sure you're free. No exceptions. And remember, these people are our guests. You can't do enough for them. All right, Maggie. Off to the school. Wayne, you got a minute? Inspector Murray just phoned me about your wife. About Roz? No, 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 the other one, the one you keep outside town. You know this civilian we're employing for secretarial, general support officer? Yeah. Well, Roz has applied for the job. Oh, that. Give her a message from me, will you? Tell her she's won herself an interview. Top panel, me and Inspector Murray. Oh, thanks, boss. She'll be stoked. Well, it's your marriage, I suppose. Sorry? Together 24 hours a day, no matter how tired or cranky you are. Nothing for conversation. Locked up like hens in a shed. I don't think it'll be a problem. I don't know, Roz. Together 24 hours a day like hens in a shed. Oh, come on. It won't be that bad. Anyway, I thought you hated working at the station. Well, this is secretarial, not pushing a mop. The boss runs that place like a concentration camp. I can cope, I promise. Look, if it gets too hard, I resign. You mean more to me than any job. Well, most jobs. And we could use the money, couldn't we? Nick, I've just had old man Henderson on the blower again. Get over there, will you? Donnelly Sandigatruda's bull's gone in amongst his Herefords and Henderson's gone and impounded the bloody thing. They impounded Donnelly of the bull. Excuse me. Mrs D yes, reckons right. Donnelly's threatening to drive his I tractor through Henderson's fences. Go and sort it out. a little busy. Can I help you? No, I would... Good morning. Sergeant Croydon. Uh, don't tell me, um... Jane Midford. Vivian Harris is my mother. Eric Midford. Yeah, Tom Croydon, Eric. Uh, ought to work it out, Jane, don't Sergeant, we? we have just been to see my mother. Ah, right, the, uh, the tractor. Amongst other things. She doesn't seem to think that you're taking this at all seriously. We're all in this together, Sergeant. Yeah, uh, uh, these children she's talking about, have you actually seen them? Could you give us a description, some names? You think she's imagining this, I suppose. Well, I don't know. I've got very little to work with at the moment. Sergeant, just because my mother is 70 doesn't mean that she's senile. Or that her life should be shut down for other people's convenience. I can assure you, Mrs Midford, that is not the case. Jane's simply concerned about her mother's welfare. Yes, so am I, Mr Midford. We're doing all we can. Good. I'm hoping I won't have to come back here again, Sergeant. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning. 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 Good morning
morning. Doyle. Did you get onto the school? Yes. And? Nothing. They hadn't heard the slightest whisper. Yeah, but they will be keeping a careful ear open for us. They said they would. Good. Get back there tomorrow. That was the daughter. I don't know what's got up her nose, but if she gets Viv stirred up, the old girl's likely to drag down the rifle and start blazing away. That could be nasty. Why, and you get over to Viv's place now. Let her know from me, no shenanigans with firearms. Tell her we won't cop it, but most of all, reassure her. Good. That mightn't be so easy, boss. She's a pretty cantankerous old biddy. Like Auntie Frieda. Yeah, you could say that. Well, in that case, you'd better go with Wayne because you'll know how to humour her, won't you? Right up. Mrs. Harris, I suppose you've come to tell me you've caught those young chaps. Now, we've come to tell you that we've got everything under control. You think so? Well, I've got news for you. Come on. Did you see anyone? I was in the machinery shed using the grinder for hours. Could have happened any time. What about this? Protection. Oh, Mrs. Harris. You don't think I'm just going to wait for some kid to come in here and knock me on the head whenever he feels like it. Mrs. Harris, blasting away at someone isn't the answer. I'm not a complete moron. I'm not about to put away some delinquent in a box unless I can get away with it. That's just to let them know I mean business. All I want's a bit of peace and quiet. They wouldn't be doing this if George was still here, I'm telling you straight. Oh, sit down. George, your husband? Yep. Ten years last week. I'm sorry to hear that. Married 38 years and never a crossword. You're married, aren't you? Yeah. Her name's Roz. She's terrific. Roz. Nice name. Reliable. Like George. He always was reliable. That is, until he got sick. And then one morning, just, just like that. Right here in the kitchen. Right there, we're... Getting soft in the old age. It um, must be a bit of a problem running this place on your own. No trouble at all. 200 sheep. All the cattle know me. And their conversation's better than most people's mindless blather, anyhow. How many head do you have? 70. We rotate them around the paddock. Pregnant cows, heifers for breeding, calves. Place practically runs itself. You don't want to hear all this. I like it here. That's all there is to it. I'd want it to sell, I'd have sold it to Jack McKenzie. Who? Jack McKenzie, my next door neighbour. He wanted to buy the place? Yeah. When was this? Twelve months ago. <sighs> Jack McKenzie's not crooked. Forty years I've known him since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. He wouldn't. Now, about your Ross. Can she cook? Oh, my oath, she can cook. Actually, you two would get along like a house on fire. We'll let you know as soon as something turns up, Mrs. Harris. And don't go losing your head with that rifle. Oh, here come Jane and Eric. Let's keep the window between us. I'll tell them I broke it myself by accident. Eric will only go on at Jane and make her feel guilty. Mushrooms. They were everywhere along the river. Have I finally stirred you into some action? We were just explaining to your mother what we're doing. And you haven't accomplished very much at all. We've got two buckets full. The river runs right through here. Yeah, we're familiar with it. Hardly ever picked. Terrible waste. I'd be up here every weekend if I could. Mm, it's the trouble with people who have never lived in the country. They can only see the bright side. There's a downside more to it than the city. Nothing but noise and pollution there. Well, there's good things about both sides, I suppose. We'll have to go, Mrs. Harris. We'll keep in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye, Mrs. Harris. Bye. Jack McKenzie's her next-door neighbour. Apparently, he offered to buy her out about a year ago. Yeah, I've done some checking. 
If Harris a stockhand, Billy Sinclair works two days a week for Mackenzie. Uh, lots of stockhands put in hours here and there. Come on, boss. Like you said, kids brag. There hasn't even been a squeak. Jack McKenzie's one of the biggest property owners in the district. He's a standover merchant. Can't bear not to get his own way. Doesn't change the fact that he carries a lot of weight. Could be a hornet's nest, PJ. What, you're telling me to back off? No, I'm telling you to find me something more concrete before you go interrogating the likes of Jack McKenzie. Talk to Billy first, see what you can get out of him. Oh, what's the point? Tom Croydon's stuck in the 10th century BC. It takes a while, that's all, to get to know you. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't be intimidated, should I? If I want the job, I should just go for it. Nothing to lose by giving it a bell. Yeah, but on the other hand, working with Wayne like that, 24 hours a day, like hens in a shed... Hmm. Oh, there's a lot to be considered. How's it going, Billy? Triple 20. <laughs> Triple 20. Nice shot. So who's up, you or me? Ten bucks in. Uh, not against the district champ, mate. Listen, uh, Bill, I need a couple of minutes. Just a statement about those kids down the station. Well, why me? That's uh, routine, won't take long. I'll call in later. Now'd be better. Forget it. Why? Because a man's having a few beers and he don't feel like it. Fair enough? It's sort of important, Billy. Or don't you want to help her out? I really love that old woman. She's like a mum to me. So can we go? I told you, no. Need your help on this one, mate? What is this? How come you're hassling a man? That tractor. Are you saying it was me? Just checking out the facts. She's like a mum to me, I'm telling you. So let's get it sorted out. You reckon a man's in on it, don't you? I don't know, Billy, are you? You're a bloody mug. Big mistake, Billy. I'm doing you for assault, mate. You should know better, Billy. Well, how come you're charged? What have I done? A bit of biff with your darts, mates, is one thing. Assaulting an officer is different. This bloke can't take a joke. No sense of humour. Yeah, you're right about that one. Did you hear what he said? About giving Viv a hard time. About doing a track. He's mean, Billy. Oh, I worked for her for 15 years. If anyone heard her, I'd break the bloody Fingerprints next, mate. Fingerprints? Let's go. He's trying to load that tractor on me. That ain't fair, Sarge. You have the right to decline your fingerprints. Well, I want it per usual. But no bloody fingerprints. Belt and shoelaces, then. Evening, Sergeant. Mr. Midford. We're headed back. I just wanted to apologise. If my wife gave the wrong impression, there's no offence intended. And none taken. Being Viv's daughter, she gets emotional, of course. But we really are concerned about this. Oh, naturally, and I am as well. What, with the broken window and everything? Ah, so you know about that? Well, she told us eventually. Of course, it'd be easier for everyone if we moved back out here. Oh, is that an option? Not really. Jane's not about to be in it, and Viv's not going to leave the farm. A bit stubborn, eh? Like her daughter. Anyway, she's in the car. Righty, I'll, uh, I'll let you know if anything turns up. Thanks. Billy's all tucked up for the night. Fancy a beer, boss? I'd have thought you'd have had enough beer for one day. <laughs> Ross has bought herself a bit of an uphill battle, mate. Yep, we eyeballed a main opposition, the Sarvo. Yeah, we're talking full-on competition, are you? Oh, yeah, who is she? He, mate. She's a he. Yeah? <laughs> yep, he's a young bloke from hospital admin. One of the nurses tipped me off. Yeah, nice suit, very respectable. Robbie Tyler, very nice bloke. Tom's gonna love him. Thanks, Chris. Don't worry, matey. Everyone on his merits. This thing's getting out of hand. It could be as simple as an old lady's bad memory and we've got Billy in the slammer. How is Billy? Ah, uh, cool in his heels. Don't oh. ever beat him at darts. He holds a grudge. Another one? No, thanks. Not for me. Not only that, we're making a nuisance of ourselves at the high school and you still want to stir up Jack McKenzie. This could turn into World War Three any tick of the clock. That's why I need to talk to him, get a handle on PJ, it. PJ, don't I'm... worry. The man's a jerk, but I'll tread softly. When you've got something to talk to him about, get back to me. Otherwise, stay well away. And I want Billy released first thing tomorrow morning. Blake deserved to get pinched. Acting like a mug. Yeah, you did. What can I say? Won't happen again, I guarantee you that. Ah, uh, forget it, Billy. Mackenzie wants to buy Viv's place, right? You're not gonna get me offside with Mackenzie. I need that job. Ah, it's just between us, mate, you and me. Tell her it's a good offer, he says. 
Tell her it's in her own best interest. Well, that's true enough. It is. And she is getting on. So I did. Hmm. Huh? So when was this? A couple of months back. Ah, just before all the trouble started. Check, Mackenzie wouldn't do nothing. He's hard, but fair. You've got to give him that. Yeah, right. Look, it's a genuine offer, and Viv ought to grab it. Like I said, she's not getting any younger. Look, are you sure she won't mind if we just have chocks? Well, she's dropping in for a bit of lunch, that's all. She won't want you to go to any trouble. Look, that's not the point. I just wish you'd ask first. I opened my mouth and it happened. Yeah, like in The Exorcist. You'll love her, I promise. A doddering 70-year-old? What time's your shift? Not till three, so you won't get stuck with her. And she's not doddering, she's fitter than you or I. Come on, gorgeous. Cheer up. G'day, Viv, come in. G'day, Wayne. Here's a nice bottle of plonk from the cellar. Now, you haven't gone to any trouble, have you? No trouble at all. Not a bit. I'm Viv Harris, my wife, Roz. Roz Viv Harris. Hi. How are you? But why shouldn't you apply for the job? Because I won't get it anyway. And Wayne's got another point. Husbands and wives who work together, live in each other's pockets. What happens to the marriage? Oh, don't be so wet. Needn't hurt the marriage. I don't know, you know. Together 24 hours a day, all the moods, all the pressure. George and I worked together all our married life. Wouldn't have had it any other way. Had a whale of a time. Really? Yeah, made it better. That's honest. <laughs> Tom Croydon might bark like a bull terrier. But when it comes down to it, it'll lick you all over. Go ahead. Do the interview. What have you got to lose? I think you've talked me into it. Young devil. I know you're in here. Show yourself. Where are you? It all happened too quickly. So you don't remember anything? No. Only Billy. Billy? Well, you saw Billy? I opened my eyes and there he was. So it could have been him in the shed? No, don't be ridiculous. You're barking up the wrong tree with that one. How are we going? I've got a headache. I'm sorry, Detective Hashem. I think we need a break here. Sure. Take it easy, Mrs. Harris. And don't you go picking on Billy. Find anything? No. What about you? No. Whatever they planned on doing, she must have sprung them before they could get round to it. We'd be sick enough to do this type of stuff, attacking an old lady. Go, boss. How is she? Ah, oh, a bit shaken up. Nasty cut to the forehead's the main damage. Six stitches. They keeping her in? Yeah, observation one or two days. No, I might pop around and see her tonight. Yeah, she'd appreciate it. They need her the ground, OK? Might suss something. I just want to see her, PJ. A policeman's never off duty, Wayne. That's right, mate. Plus, I reckon she knows more than she's letting on. I never know what to bring to hospitals, so I settled for chocolates. My theory is that if you don't eat them yourself, you can use them to bribe the nurses. Thank you very much, Ross. So how are we feeling? Remember any more? No, we haven't. 
You a spy. We're not here to pester you. Look, Viv, whoever did this will catch him. But it'd help if you told us everything you know. That's enough of business, OK? How's the food? The nurse is treating you all right? Oh, you know. Hmm? Younger generation. Reckon they know it all and they've barely got a laugh by the tail. What about you? Not nervous about your interview tomorrow? Well, I hope Tom Croydon doesn't see through me like you do. What are you doing here? Jane. No, Eric, I warned them, but they obviously took no notice. We've just come here to see Viv. Well, it's thanks to you that my mother's in hospital. And that we're spending our entire lives driving up and down that damned highway. It's happened now. Don't go on about it. Uh, look, we'll call back later. Take care. Bye. Sorry. I'm taking this up with the local inspector. Does he realise what a shambles this station's in? Tom? Just a minute. Morning, sir. I had some woman ringing me at home last night about an old lady being terrorised. Oh, well, I assume that'd be the door. It'd be 20 Jane. minutes to get off the phone. Well, you know how families are in a case like this. Well, from what I've been told, it seems that her attitude is perfectly reasonable, given the circumstances. Yeah, of course it is. We're doing what we can. It's just we've got damn all to go. I don't need another bag of snakes, Tom. <laughs> got plenty of those already. Sir? I'm not saying you can't play cricket, mate. I'm just saying he's overrated. Ten years ago, no way he would have made the team. Crap, he's the best bowler we've had for yonks. <laughs> I avoid wasting the trip. I thought as I was here, I'd have a quick look through the books. Inspector Murray, good morning. Doyle. Ashram, Schultz. So are you, sir? <clears throat> Bit of a hurry this morning, were we? Sir? The jacket, Doyle, it does have buttons. Organise the rosters and the property book, Sergeant. I'll look at those first. Yes, sir. Well, you heard him. And where the hell's Patterson? Darling, which of these do you think Tom Croydon would like? Oh, I'd like all three. Oh, come on, Wayne. Mm. He would love honest. Just be yourself and you'll kill him. Inspector Murray's in this morning, and if I'm late, it's back to the academy. <laughs> uh, are you going to wish me luck? Luck. Thirty seconds to spare. The man's a genius. Too bad, sailor. Murray's always early. Yeah, already had the inspection parade, noted who was here, and you flunked out, We mate. tried to cover for you, mate, but a watch house keeper's very hard to hide. Oh, no. Dead set. Now, what was the last thing the boss said before he went into his office? Uh, where the hell's Patterson? Uh, quote, unquote. I'm not even late. Well, if you get here after Murray, mate, you're late. You see Viv Harris last night? Yeah, me and Roz. PJ, this just arrived by courier. It says urgent. So, get anything out of her? I didn't get much of a chance. Her daughter and son-in-law were there. Didn't seem too pleased to see us. She reckons she's going to dob us into Murray. <laughs> yeah, that'd be right. Yes. Tattoo on Billy's forearm, fellas. What does it say? Um, oh, I didn't really notice. It says Janine. Very good, Max. Janine. Fifteen years ago, armed robbery Queensland. Janine and the bloke both arrested. Janine did five. Bloke skipped bail. What do you reckon? Yeah, no, that's Billy, all right. A lot more here, but it's him. Yeah, William Sinclair Quast. So we'll put you on to him. Well, he didn't want his prints taken, right? So I did an urgent check on that tattoo. Want to catch us an arm robber, mate? Too yeah, right. G'day, Billy. You here by yourself, mate? Viv's daughter and son-in-law went back this morning. So what? A simple question. You reckon I had something to do with what happened to Viv? You're wrong. No, we can talk about that later, mate. Right now, I want to know what you're up to 15 years ago in Queensland. You and Janine. Worse than giving up smoking. Thanks very much. You're next, Mrs. Patterson. 
Ich mag. Eine Teufel. Ready when you are. Morning, gentlemen. Sit down, Mrs. Patterson. Well, you're certainly very well credentialed, Mrs. Patterson. Thank you. Well, it's quite some time since you worked in an office environment. Several years. Um, that's true, I know, but I I'm sure it wouldn't take me long to pick things up again. Plus, I, I do have a knowledge of police life. Sergeant, I'm sure you've got some questions. Oh, yes, I have quite a few, in fact. Uh, a knowledge of police life, Mrs. Patterson. What do you mean by that exactly? So tell us about Janine. My girlfriend. The reports say that the job was her idea. Drugs? Right. What about you? Never touched him. Man was just a kid. Big mouth, few juveniles. Mm-hmm. Go on. Well, it all went wrong, didn't it? We got sprung. And you skipped bail. Well, there didn't seem much point hanging around after that. Took me two years to tumble, that's why she did it. What letting you go? Ever hear from her? No, she died in jail. Drugs. I went off on a bit of a bender after that. Came here once. Turned myself in. And the place was shut. Viv helped me through. Does she know? She knows there's something, but not what. Viv don't ask questions. She's fair income. So why'd you put her in hospital? That wasn't me. Who was it? How should I know? Level with us, Billy. That old lady could have been seriously injured, so come on, mate. I told you. I don't know anything about it. Young bloke from the hospital was outstanding. Yes, he was. That's right. What do you think? Oh, Ross Patterson went well when she settled down. A bit bumpy early on, though. She's one of us, knows the system. Can be lent on if necessary, you mean? Well, not really, but outsiders can have a lot of troubles with police culture at times. True, but the hospital culture's not all that far removed. Can I get you gentlemen something else? Uh, no, thank you. Delicious. Sergeant Croydon? Oh, no, thanks. No, it was very nice. Anything at all, just let me know. I want that woman, Rose. That's all there is to it. My opinion doesn't matter at all. Let me explain the situation to you, Tom. There's politics. Higher up, ministerial scrutiny. Yeah, that's all very now, well. A little affirmative action at the moment would help both of us. With all due respect, appointing a woman as a secretary is hardly affirmative action in this day and age, is it? This isn't an easy job, Tom. You only get a glimmer of the pressures on me at times. Yeah, but sure they have got the graphs, case. ratios, computer analysis, apart from the flack that I'm already taking from the station. Ross Patterson, it is. I don't want people dragging their feet on this one, Tom. I want it to work. Clear? Yes. Something else. I wasn't overly impressed this morning, Tom. Doyle looked like something the cat had dragged in and Patterson wasn't there at all. Although he should have been, according to the roster. A sloppy appearance, a sloppy work habits. One, one follows the other in my book. No good at the best of times, and especially not during police week. Yeah, I take your point. Now, the fact is, you could stand to drop a few pounds yourself. Lead by example, Tom. That's the way to go. No, the inspector was quite impressed with that young bloke from the hospital, but the boss got into him, changed his mind. Oh, why would he do that? Tom Croydon hates me. No, he doesn't. Look, the boss told me himself he doesn't want an outsider. Police culture's different, and you know it from the inside. So, he went into bat for you. What's wrong? Well, since I got home, I've been thinking, and I'm sure it's a bad idea. I don't want to take the job. You mad at me? Oh, of course not. So long as you're sure that's what you want. Yeah, I am. I'm certain. Well, leave it to me. I'll tell him. KC, this is Detective Hashem. Put me through to Mount Thomas. 
Yes, PJ. Striding past the Harris's. Uh... Nobody's supposed to be there, but the gate's open. I'm going to take a look. Do you require assistance? No, not at this stage. I'll be in touch. Right, up, PJ. Have you got a minute, boss? How did Roz take the good news? I'm sorry, boss. She's changed her mind. She's what? Oh, it sunk in what you said before. Uh, together, 24 hours a day, like hens in a shed. I stuck my neck out to get her this job. And she's grateful, boss. No, Patterson, you're not listening. I stuck my neck out? Are you, is she trying to make a fool of me? Of course not. Good. Well, you talk to her. Make her see reason. Do I make myself clear? Can I help you? Yeah, Detective Hasham, out Thomas Police. Who are you? Eric Midford, Viv's son-in-law. Look, I'm glad you arrived. As I pulled up, a couple of blokes took off down the gully. I, I chased them, but they got away. Is that petrol I smell? They were big blokes. 15 or 16, I reckon. They jumped down a gully and I lost them. But I can give you a description. Go down to the station and get some details, eh? Eric Midford, the son-in-law. Yeah. He says it was kids. Two descriptions. You believe him? Nope. Eric, we just want to chat about the situation generally. How come you're back here? Oh, I thought they might come back. I had some time on my hands, so here I am. And I was right, wasn't I? Does your wife know you're here? Impulse decision. Look, I've given you a description of those two blokes. What more do you want? Oh, the description's a little vague, mate. Well, it's the best I can do. It's two blokes splashing petrol around, and then you turned up. Just that little bit too late, I might add. You smelled the petrol yourself. Of course I did. I was standing in it. Anyway, uh, what about the container? Mm, what about it? Well, check it for fingerprints. You won't find my prints on it. You'll find those two blokes' prints staring you in the face. If your mother-in-law does sell, your wife could come into some money. Except I don't want her to sell. I like it here. I'd come up here and live. Go fishing in the river. Except Jane left when she was 16. There's no way she's coming back. Look, ask Viv. She'll confirm all this. Come on, Eric. Neither of us believe any of this rubbish. Cooperate and we'll put in a good word. I don't know what you're talking about. You tried for the shed and not the house. Why? Minimise property damage? Best sale price? How am I doing? The container won't have your prints because you used gloves. Uh, there was an old pair of gloves right beside it, wasn't there? I wouldn't have a clue. Look. You're not facing time or anything. The thing with Viv was an accident. She had a gun, you panicked. Perfectly understandable. Isn't that how it was? I was in the city with friends. He did it all right. I probably paid off a local hern for the tractor and the window. Sorry to burn down the shed himself. Reckon that's what he was on about when the old girl sprung him. Well, if we can prove he wasn't in the city when he was supposed to be. Ah, I'll produce an alibi, a couple of mates. Nope, our case hasn't got legs, mate, and he knows it. Unless Mrs Harris saw something. Well, how do you mean, boss? Well, he's her son-in-law. She wouldn't want to drop him in it. I think we can get her to make a statement. Why don't you talk to her? Try and make her see sense. That bugger should be locked up. Here we are. Good as new. More flowers. Got some great news, Viv. We're under what's been happening. I'm selling up. Moving to the city. You're selling the farm. 
Jane doesn't want it. I've been kidding myself for years that she might come back someday, that, that Eric and I might persuade her. The castle's in the air. She never will. Viv, we know who was in the shed, and you do too. Come on, he's the reason you're in here. Give us a statement. It was an accident. We'll put that in the statement. You love that place. You deserve to stay. Did he threaten you? We'll protect you. You don't have to do this. There's nothing like that. Well, it's not the way it looks to me. Come on, be fair on yourself. Give us a statement and we'll end this thing once and for all. No one's going to mess with you or they'll have to deal with me. Yes. I saw who was in the shed. Lying there last night, it all came back to me. It was a kid. A teenager. I'd never seen him before in my life. It's the son-in-law who's been harassing her, and probably the daughter as well. But we can't prove a damn thing. So she's thrown in the towel. She's moving down to the city, and God knows what's going to happen to her once they get their hands on her. Well, why don't I talk to her? I don't see what good that'd do, Roz. No, just a chat. I mean, I'm not in uniform. And if it is those two, then she'll be at their mercy. We've got to do something, don't we? No, I'll get us both a drink. Uh, there is one other thing. What? The job. The boss would really like you to reconsider. Still? You will hold on and hear me out, OK? He can think what he wants, but I don't want you feeling pressured. If you really don't want to take it, he can go for a walk. You're a wonderful man, Wayne Patterson. <laughs> Viv, I know how much this place means to you. I'm so sorry. We'll try and make it up to you. I'll hold you to that. I didn't mean to hurt you. You know that, don't you? I was just hoping that I could get Jane to see sense and move back here. I know why you did it, Eric. But I don't think now's the time to discuss it. OK? Hello, Roz. Hi. Good to see you out and about. Eric, this is a friend of mine, Roz. Roz, this is Eric. We're going into business together, a hardware store. Why don't you go and help Jane with the packing? I want to show Roz around the place. Excuse me, Roz. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Wayne told me. Aren't you going to say anything? It's better this way. There's no harm in Eric. We get on all right. And I'll own the hardware store. He'll be working for me. He'll do as he's told or else. Wayne thought that they were both involved. I don't think she's got a clue. Eric wanted Jane to move back here. He got desperate, so he tried to shame her into it. Didn't work, of course. So why are you selling? I mean, you love it here. Her father was sick when she left home, and I didn't take it very well. She'd made all the plans, you know, before he got sick. She just ran for it. Scared she was going to get locked up on the farm. All that sort of kid stuff. Anyway, we never really sorted it out. But if you're unhappy in the city, that's no answer. Oh, I won't be unhappy. I'll buy this hardware and we'll give it a go. If it doesn't work out, well, I'll flog it and I'll come back here. Well, I hope you know what you're doing, that's all. So do I. And thank you for caring. But it's not me who's had the rough end of the stick. You're leaving. When? We're packing now. But it'll be a few days yet. I'm sorry, Billy. You'll have a good lawyer for this. I promise you that. Thanks, Viv. But I'm not holding me breath. Man's got it coming. It's the way it goes. I'm going to miss you. You've been a good friend. <sighs> sloppy appearance, sloppy work habits. One follows the other in my book. In future, uniforms will be worn as you were trained to wear them at the academy. Hair will be cut to regulation length. And if you're rostered on for work at a particular time, then I expect to see you at your desk or ready to leave on patrol at that time and not just coming through the front door. Am I making myself clear? 
Pull your socks up, the lot of you. Now, I don't want to have this conversation again. Ah, our first tour of Police Week. Welcome, ladies. Come on through. Constable Doyle, this is Constable Doyle here. She Hi, will take charge you? of you. Come on in. Uh, Sergeant Croydon's office on your right as you come in our interview room. And if you'd like to go this way. Hello. 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 Uh, can Hello. I help you, madam? I'd like to speak to Sergeant Croydon, please. Good hour. I'll fetch him for you. Yeah, excuse me. Over that way. That's the style. Uh, boss, someone to see you. What can I do for you, Mrs Midford? Sergeant, this police station is the most inefficient place I have ever come across in my entire life. My mother would be far better off away from this station and this town. I'm sorry you feel that way. Oh, look at the evidence, Sergeant. You couldn't even track down a couple of school kids giving a little old lady a hard time. I mean, you people obviously haven't got a clue what's going on in your own backyard. You wouldn't know if your shirt tails were on fire. I'm glad to have seen the last of you. It was kids. Look, are you sure you didn't leave the handbrake off? It's easy enough to do. I may be old, young lady, but I'm not stupid. It's kids. Which kids? How would I know? Kids from the school. They run riot these days, different when I was young. Oh, maybe I ought to just get out the rifle. You can't do that, Mrs Harris. You do something about it then, and I won't have to, will I? Ah. Oh. At least there's somebody who gives a damn. So what's happening? They do you again for drunk and disorderly. <laughs> uh, this is Billy, my stock hand. Got your winch? In the truck. Billy, have you seen any uh, kids hanging around the property? No, I'm only here one day a week. But it's kids all right. That's for sure. They're out of control. I'm telling you, Wayne, it's my auntie Frida all over again. Oh, we've known her for half an hour. You're ready to put her in the funny farm. My auntie Frida is not in a funny farm. Oh, could we please <laughs> shut the family album and just get on with this? Three weeks ago, she phoned up and said her ute was nicked. I found it in the paddock behind the house. Key's still in the ignition. Boss, she left it there. Two months back, cows on the road, prang, gate left open. Looked like her to me. I mean, she's what, boss? She's 70. All right, 70. Well, that's getting on. It still could be kids, giving her a hard time because she's old and helpless. That old dear's about as helpless as a Rottweiler. Oh, so we're just going to dump her. No, we are not just going to dump her. You are going to go out there and keep an eye on the place, see if there's anything in this. Maggie, you go over to the school, have a bit of a natter with the teachers. Nothing official, just kids bragging, someone dobbing, you know, the sort of thing. Got it, boss. Yeah, hang on a minute, I haven't finished yet. Police week. Ah, oh, yes, I knew that would bring a smile to your faces. Police week. Well, I'm sure I don't need to remind you, it begins in four days' time. There'll be public tours of the station, commencing with the women's lawn bowls team. That'll be yours in PJ. Oh, thanks a lot, Pat. Maggie, you can take that one. Oh, thanks very much, boss. After that, there will be tours every day for the rest of the week. Both the schools, the CWA, etc., etc. These rosters will tell you which tours you're taking and at what time. Read them and we. Uh, boss, now, I'm pretty I've, busy. I've got to do some lot traffic. Of Spare me the excuses. You all know the score. Check the times of your tours and make sure you're free. No exceptions. And remember, these people are our guests. You can't do enough for them. All right, Maggie. Off to the school. Wayne, you got a minute? Inspector Murray just phoned me about your wife. About Roz? No, 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 the other one, the one you keep outside town. You know this civilian we're employing for secretarial, general support officer? Yeah. Well, Roz has applied for the job. Oh, that. Give her a message from me, will you? Tell her she's won herself an interview. Top panel, me and Inspector Murray. Oh, thanks, boss. She'll be stoked. Well, it's your marriage, I suppose. Sorry? Together 24 hours a day, no matter how tired or cranky you are. Nothing for conversation. Locked up like hens in a shed. I don't think it'll be a problem. I don't know, Roz. Together 24 hours a day like hens in a shed. Oh, come on. It won't be that bad. Anyway, I thought you hated working at the station. Well, this is secretarial, not pushing a mop. The boss runs that place like a concentration camp. Oh, I can cope, I promise. Look, if it gets too hard, I resign. You mean more to me than any job. Well, most jobs. And we could use the money, couldn't we?
Nick, I've just had old man Henderson on the blower again. Get over there, will you? Donnelly Sandigatrude's bull's gone in amongst his Herefords and Henderson's gone and impounded the bloody thing. Impounded Donnelly of the bull. Excuse me. Mrs D yes, reckons right. Donnelly's threatening to drive his I tractor through Henderson's fences. Go and sort it out. Little 